Welcome, my friends. You're listening to the voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome again, my friends, to the voice of the eternal gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, inviting you to join us in prayer today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that we can have this opportunity to open your word. Amen. Now, Lord, we address our prayer to the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary where Christ is our great high priest. Amen. And we ask now, please grant us that Holy Spirit and give us understanding of the scriptures Teach us, Revelation 18, that we might share and rightly divide the word of truth with those who are listening. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We saw on the last program how there is this, uh, that Jesus himself was going to bring a, a very important message for this end time based on Revelation 18. We went through several Bible verses. Uh, to prove that the being over there that bring this message was Jesus himself. It was such an important message that he did not commit that message to any angel, but him himself brought it up. But, but I know, uh, here we come. There's two facts today, uh, two aspects. I know, I know we weren't, we finished the program last time uh, going on about some abomination taking place on Ezekiel chapter 9. Yes. Because why it's important to review or to connect the message on, Revela on Ezekiel 9 to Revelation is because there will be a time, and I, we believe, we've seen, that those abominations are, are, are coming into our days. How, okay, if I ask you, mm -hmm. how the, the abomination that Ezekiel saw in Revelation 18, it was like heaven saying, I need to intervene. I need to do something about for the sake of my people. Let, I need to make a calling out of those abominations for the sake of God's people. My children are there. And Pastor Barry, I believe that he was trying, to, and all of us, trying to bring in, in, uh, in a symb symbolic way how those abominations are being seen in the last days. Remember, the last abomination that we went was Ezekiel 8, verse, verse 14. 14 right. But there is a greater abomination. Yes, a greater Go abomination. Ahead, pick up from there. The reason why we're saying this is because we're going to see what event is going to actually cause the message of Revelation 18 to accelerate. Right. All right? And, and in a desperate way, yeah. Jesus himself calling his people out of the great Bible. Right. What we're seeing in Revelation and Ezekiel 8, uh, uh, right now. Ezekiel 8, we just saw women weeping for Tammuz. And you ask, now we, what, what would be a greater abomination what, what, Now, what would be a greater abomination than that now? We see this is immortality of the soul, believing that right. people live on after death. Right. All right. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9, 5 and 6, the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Mm -hmm. It says here, their love, their envy and hatred is now perished. Neither have they any more portion forever of anything done under the sun. Mm -hmm. But now going a bit closer in Ezekiel 8, 15 and 16 now. Can you read that for me? Then said he unto me, hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. Now remember, we're basing this abomination off of what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 15, when it says, when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Now if we were to compare Matthew 24, 15 with Mark, Mark says, when ye shall see the abomination of desolation standing where it ought not be. Meaning that something is going to be standing in, some, in, a, in a holy ground, claiming to be holy, that's not holy at all. All right? In the time of, in the, time of the disciples, it was the Roman standard. The Roman standard was an eagle, golden eagle, 
that was put upon the, a flagpole and put down on holy ground. Talk about the pagan Rome. Right, pagan Rome. That was pagan Rome. That was the abomination. The disciples, when they saw the golden eagle of the Roman standard standing on holy ground, the holy ground was where Abraham offered Isaac mm -hmm. and where and where uh, uh, on Mount Moriah, Mount Moriah was later known as Mount Calvary. Right, where Jesus and, was and crucified. Jesus crucified. And that was the holy ground, though, mm -hmm. that was considered holy to the Jews at one time, right? Mm -hmm. When you shall see the abomination of this thing standing on holy ground, who shall read of let him under what? Understand. Mm -hmm. And then it was time for them to flee. Leave. No two Christian was killed in the destruction of Jerusalem. Why? Because, because they heeded the, the message of the disciples and what Jesus said, about when you shall see the abomination of desolation. Now off. we're breaking down the abomination for a moment because we want to show what a desolation is. Let's look at, before we go before on our next point, what is the abomination? That what is the greatest abomination of all? Roman, uh, Ezekiel uh, 8, 16. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east. And they worshiped the sun toward the they east. They worshiped the sun towards the east. So wait a minute. They worshiped the sun towards the east was called a great abomination, right? Because the worship of the sun was the worship of Baal. And Baal was the ancient worship of Nimrod, who was believed that when he died, his spirit went into the sun. Now we know this, so this is, this is, this is, but this sun worship is the, is the oldest worship outside of the Sabbath that mankind has worked on. It's the, right. is the most ancient worship, but the most ancient worship above sun worship is the Sabbath worship, right. which was given at the dawn of man being created before he even fell. The first day okay. he ever lived. Before he ever lived, right. Be, be, before sin. Before sin, even before sin in the world, that's right. So we know that the Sabbath is the oldest worship and the true Sabbath from, was the seventh day Sabbath Amen. from sunset Friday to sunset Saturday. We know that's the true Sabbath, uh, all right? We studied that we, with we you all that, right. many times. Which but is now, good. the reason why I'm bringing this up because Jesus said, when you shall see the abomination of desolation, now the disciples saw it in their day, but this history is to be repeated. We're to see the abomination that will bring desolation in our day. Well, what's an abomination? An idol. What is the idol? It's going to be an idol day of rest, a day that is not sanctified by God. But that idle day of rest is called an abomination. What was the abomination that the ancients had? The worship of the sun. So is it possible that the worship of sun is going to be exalted again in our time? The worship of the environment is already being exalted. But the main god of ancient environmental worship was the sun god. That was the same god that Elijah and them, where Elijah protested against and challenged the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. Right. And so we're going to find that this issue of the sun god is going to become a major issue because sun god is connected with Sunday, mm -hmm. the day of the sun. When you put it together, you have Sunday. That's why Constantine decided that he could bring all the religions together by Sunday, by bringing, by making Sunday the day for the pagan and making Sunday the day for the Christian. The day of the unconquered sun. The unconquerable sun, that's right. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's even funny. Because the excuse that they brought up, at least the bishop of Rome that time, well, let's, by, by, by doing this, by putting together, by separating this first day of the week, the day of the sun and the pagan Rome, okay, we can, we can justify by saying that we will commemorate from now on the date of the resurrection of Christ. Hmm. That was a human reasoning which millions and millions of people have been accepting since that time. However, there, there, are, there are only eight Bible verses, only eight in the whole New Testament referring to the first day of the week. And I will very respectfully, I know... People have been misunderstanding me when I say we want to challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, we have been even offering a thousand dollar to prove to us with the King James if any one of those eight Bible verses in the New Testament will shows that the sanctity of the seven day Sabbath 
was transferred to the first day of the week, either by, in the whole New Testament, yeah. either by Jesus or the disciple. Please don't bring to me a letter from St. Patrick, St. San Ignacio de Loyola, or, no, no. I'm talking about just the Bible. Right. Okay? The Bible. Right. The Bible alone, we have been offering a thousand dollars. A very wealthy man one time told me, Pastor, don't just offer a thousand dollars. Offer a million dollars. I will give it up. A million dollars. Wow. And I, obviously nobody have come up to claim the thousand the million dollars. Right. Now, I want to just show you. Okay. I, and I'm mm -hmm. saying this mm -hmm. in love because mm -hmm. so many people have fallen into that idea using like a 1 Corinthians 16, 1. Or the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse, you know, and so on. Eight verses trying to justify. And, and, and by the way, I, I don't want to take time in this program because we already say that we're not going to deal with that today. But in the, in the, either the air final warnings that you can call free of charge or the 28 pages <laughs> that many of you are, 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 are Calling to order free of charge. We're not even trying to make a sale over here. Free of charge. We put those eight Bible verses. So if you want to call, you call for the 28 pages. Again, the phone is right there. There'll be people taking care of you in there throughout the week. And they'll send you. We will go at verse by verse. Proving with the Bible and the Bible alone that Jesus, neither Jesus nor the disciple, changed the solemnity of the seventh day Sabbath for the first day of the week. Mm -hmm. It is what the Bible predicted, the greatest abomination of all. Mm -hmm. That God showed it to the Ezekiel, the prophet, is showing it now, it's being introduced to Revelation 18 and Book of Revelation. And when the points is coming, when the whole, it looks like when Jesus saw the, Jesus himself, as we already covered in the previous program, when he saw that Satan was deceiving almost the whole world, he said, wait a minute, I need to call my people out of there. Okay? So it's there. I'm not going to take time in the program. And then uh, we will, we have to, Keep that in mind. In mm -hmm. love, in a very respectful way, we need to be clear in this such an important topic. Because yes, the greatest abomination that got to do in the time of Ezekiel was worship unto the sun. Likewise today, history is repeating. But just hold it right there. This is important too. We will be right back. Hi friends. I'd like to introduce you to a special book that we have available. It's the story of Pastor Rafael Perez's journey from preparing to be a priest in the Roman Catholic Church and how God worked very providentially in his life to turn him from that decision to following Jesus in the light of present truth. If you've been blessed by the Eternal Gospels program, we want to invite you to receive our new book entitled From Babylon the Great to the Eternal Gospel. It is the personal testimony of our speaker and director, Rafael Perez. But more than this, if you want courage, if you want strength, this personal testimony of this 150-page book will give you insights into why God is calling men and women out of them. And if you'd like to receive it today, just call the number at the bottom of your screen and ask for offer 777. That's offer 777. Why seven? Because the seventh day is the Sabbath. Why seven? Because the Sabbath was sanctified. Why seven? Because the final issues in this great controversy is between the Sabbath and Sunday. That is my journey. I hope and pray that you are going to order the book right now, from Babylon the Great to the Eternal Gospel. May God bless you all. Welcome back. Welcome back. My brother Patrick. Go ahead. One thing I'd like to clarify is that 
in Revelation 18, verse 1, where it does say uh, that Christ, where, uh, another angel comes down from heaven, which uh, lightens the earth with his glory, mm-hmm. does represent Christ, but n- not himself personally, but it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's, he's using his people like Christ used his disciples to preach the gospel. Right. Mm-hmm. Angels can't do it. Christ can't do it himself, but he needs people. And this represents a mo- also, an angel can also represent a movement of people. Amen. And he's lightening the earth with his glory because this world is so dark. And this, this is shown in Isaiah 60, verse 1, where Christ is saying, Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Amen. He's saying that because I, I said a few minutes ago that Jesus himself brought down to this earth the message. But I, I, I appreciate the clarification because, yes, throughout the history, Jesus present himself through human instrumentalities from Noah's time, Amen. right? Uh, he, he presented that, that God brought the message, you know, uh, and they don't know, but he used Noah. Yeah. Well, that's why you heard me say in the beginning of the Revelation 18, I said the angel has two aspects. One aspect represents Christ, but the angel is also symbolic of God's people carrying the message in the last days right. under the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what we're going to see there. And it also represents a- angels because they're helping us. Yeah, the, the church on earth and the church in above fact, is one. Look, but we proved that in Hebrews, the one Hebrews one fourteen says, talking about talk, speaking of the angels, are they not all ministering spirits right. sent forth to minister those to be heirs of salvation? Amen. We talk about God using us and using right. human instrumentality. Amen. We have Galatians four fourteen, which says, "In my temptation, which is in my flesh, ye despise not, no, no rejected, but receive me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus." Now huh. Paul was not an angel but he is received as an angel of God, as a messenger of God. So an angel is a symbol of a messenger. Now, how should they hear without a what? Preacher. Without a preacher. Right. Romans chapter 10, verse 15. Read that for me, from right, right. 14 and 15. Plus, while he looked into that, Paul also said that we are being called to be collaborators. Collaborators. Collaborators mm-hmm. with Christ. So mm-hmm. we, I mean, isn't that a good news? Yeah, it's a good news. It's right. a good news to know that Jesus loved us so much and he's so much interested in each one of our salvation that one want, want to make each one of us, you two, my friend in there, minister that listen to this program or lay, lay men or lay women. He, he, Jesus is calling all of us to get engage into this uh, work of this end time. Yes, my brother. Uh, Romans but, 10, 14 and 15 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Mm. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. All right. So we see that the angel coming down is representing also Jesus, Jesus, but it's also representing his messengers, which is God's people, giving a final message to the world. Jesus in the person of his people, no, no, right. people right, right. Christ in you, the hope of glory, right? right? Okay. So, but now go with me to First, Second Peter one twenty one, um, First Peter one twelve. Okay, go ahead, brother. It says, "Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Holy Ghost sent, when Jesus comes down, when it talks about the angel coming down from heaven, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's, what's coming down from heaven actually? Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost right. sent down from where? Christ's representative. That's right, Christ's representative sent down from heaven to work in you and me because you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Amen. It's talking about the Holy Ghost. And then at the same time, when we receive it, the least that we can do is Share it with others. Right, but it says you're going to receive power. Right. So what is power? Go to Acts 1.8. Let's be sure. Acts chapter uh, 1 and mm-hmm. verse 8 says, mm-hmm. But ye shall receive power. Yeah. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Mm-hmm. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem 
and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And what is the witness? What is it? What is they going to see? What is the witness? Because remember, this is connected to John to Matthew twenty four fourteen. Mm -hmm. Listen, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached throughout the world as a what? Witness. Witness. Unto all, 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 to all nations, and then shall the end come. come. So what is the witness that the, all nations are going to see very soon? It's going to be the witness of the Holy Ghost having Christ in you. The hope Christ of glory. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Amen. Saving his people from Saving, their sins. Right, and that's, so you have the issue of, you have the witness of the character of Christ being fully developed in the people of God as they proclaim the message. The message will not go forth so much by argument, but it will go by the unction of the Spirit. Man. Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, said the Lord. Yeah. Wow. Hey, can, can I say something now? Yeah. Wow. The only commandment, and I promise to you, we're not going to make another study on the seventh day Sabbath, but the only commandments of the Ten Commandments that reveal God's, that talk about the glory of God openly, ex more extensive way, and the glory of God is this character. Mm -hmm. It's so old. If there is a commandment of the 10 that is connected very closely to chapter 18 of Revelation, is the fourth commandment. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Okay. How beautiful is that? Do me a favor. Read Romans 15, 13. Mm -hmm. And I need, I need you to read uh, Romans uh, 15, 16. Uh, because Roman? I want to know the Holy Ghost is coming down, but I want to know what this power, how how people have power. Because people say they got the Holy Ghost, and they they magnify gifts, and they expect they expect they believe the gifts is power. The gifts is a power if it's needed for the communication of the gospel. Mm -hmm. But if you got the gift, but you don't have the life, mm -hmm. then you're not you you got power, but you don't have victory. Mm -hmm. Jesus is gonna Jesus is getting ready to deny a lot of men and women. Not because they didn't have the get some gifts of the spirit, mm -hmm. but but they didn't they had that but they denied the power of victory over sin mm -hmm. in uh, their life. Uh, Matthew chapter seven verse Matthew 21, 21, 21, 24. 21, 24. Well, we can right, get back right, into right, that. Right. But uh, which now, this verse is, do you give Revelation me? To? Fifteen thirteen. Uh, uh, Romans, Romans, Romans fifteen thirteen. I read that. Uh, let me read it. Then. I'll read it. it. Says now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So power, or Holy Spirit. So power again refers to what? The Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. All right, Romans 15, again, verse, 16. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. That I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, mm -hmm. ministering the gospel of God, mm -hmm. that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right, so now the Holy Ghost is coming down with power, but also... Power and sanctification. May I add a yeah. comment? Yes. That in Ezekiel 12, verse 20, mm -hmm. Ezekiel says that God's given us his Sabbath days, that, it, that they might be assigned to us, that he yeah. is our God yeah. who sanctifies, sanctifies us. us. Right. No, no, no. You mentioned something that called even my attention. Uh -huh. you, you, you said that some people, preachers or people, can have some gift mm -hmm. from God, but that doesn't make... that. That, that, that's not going to make them a candidate or, or safe to heaven. Right, because... And, and came to me, Matthew 7, yes. verse 21 through 24. Mm -hmm. because Why? Let, but, but, can before, I you, before you go there, okay. let me just give you this. The scripture says in Romans 6, 16, Know ye not to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey. His servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death, or obedience unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. Notice obedience unto what? Righteousness. righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now, what is righteousness here? Righteousness, we know, is the character of Christ. Mm -hmm. We know that found in Romans, Philippians 3, 9, and being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. This is dealing with character here. But the same thing, because character is connected with glory, and the glory of God is revealed through the righteousness of God. All right, in the life of the believer. But now let's go one more step further. The Bible also says in Psalms 119, 172, my tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are what? Righteousness. So stop for a moment. If the Bible, if the Holy Spirit is coming down 
the earth is going to be lightened with the what? Glory of God, right? Mm -hmm. And it's being lightened with the son of who? Son of righteousness. righteousness. Right, right. Son of righteousness means son of character, mm -hmm. glory outshining of the Father's glory, and commandments. Right. I mean, all this is connected to Revelation 18. Right, 18, right. right. And commandments, because it's called son of righteousness. All that commandments are what? Righteousness. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the earth is going to be lightened with a, with a, uh, with a movement that's going to magnify and exalt God's law and especially his seventh day Sabbath, okay. along with the idea of people having seen not only the argument over the law, but they see the character. They see Christ being formed within. They see the fruits of the spirit. They see that the, they see the enlightenment of God, the countenance shining with the, with the glory of God, okay. as did as did Stephen when he was being stoned. Wow. They saw his face shine like an angel. Mm -hmm. So you see, the angel, Stephen was a, was a man of God, a deacon, right. but his face shone like a what? Like an angel. Mm -hmm. right. And the angel is coming down. His face is as they're going to be like the sun, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus' face as the sun. But because we become like Jesus and we are partakers of his righteousness, our faces will shine with the sun. Amen. And what did Moses look like when he came down? From when Moses the came down, from the, he couldn't look upon him because his face was bright as the sun. By the way, that was seen in, in the transfiguration of Matthew chapter 17. That's right. Oh, That's right. Matthew right. 17 as well. Right. So we find that the earth is shining, but the earth is lightened with his what? With his glory, right? Mm -hmm. So now 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says what? For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness mm -hmm. has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God mm -hmm. in the face of of Jesus Christ. Amen. So now we find in the what? In the face of Jesus Christ, God's people's face lit up with the glory wow. of God as they're giving the final message of warning to the world. And it's under the power of the Holy Ghost that this enlightenment is taking place. Amen. Now, is this literally shining on the, the faces? That, this, that I'm going to see listen, you listen, shining listen, all of a sudden? Listen, no, no, you know, that I cannot with the let, light let, that let, we let, have let in me, this camera. Man, listen, the Bible says, you got two aspects of shining. Okay. Okay. Well, wh wh why do we do okay. this? Because this is such an important topic. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I need, I need to close for today. Uh, my friend, this is a greater news. This is much better than we can think of. Mm -hmm. The glory of God is going to be shined, it revealed on the people. But we're going to pick up on that in the next program. So same station, same hour. In the meantime, may God bless us all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.